Hello, everyone. Today is Friday, January 6, 2023. My name is Evan. Welcome back to another edition of Stock Market Weekly, episode 665, where it is our job to break down the most important trends, price action, and noteworthy moves across financial markets. If you're brand new to this video series, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for kicking off the new year with us. Here's how these videos work. We break up our analysis into two parts. So in part one, we comb through the numbers and pick apart everything that stands out, looks a little bit different or interesting. And then in part two, we jump into the charts. We take a deep, close look at price action and measure and map those broader market trends. So hopefully that sounds good to you. Let's jump into a very busy week, despite it being a short week. Markets closed on Monday for the New Year's holiday. So let's kick it off here with stocks ripping higher to finish out the week. It was a very choppy week heading into Friday. Friday, we had some econ data out. We had the jobs numbers. We had ISM data, which basically fell off a cliff and stocks proceeded to uh, open kind of, well, I guess, no, we, pr the pre-market futures were kind of fluctuating all around, went to f flat from positive, ultimately started the day with a gap up, tested those lows, and then proceeded to rally throughout the day. We see the dollar, which struggling to hold on to some gains. It started the year off hot. We finally got a little bit of pep and momentum in the dollar, and that ended up kind of fizzling out towards the end of the week. Sellers all around lingering in oil had a rough start to the year, down about 8%. Same thing with Tesla, down about 8%, continuing that pain. Did look like it turned around a bit on Friday, but still struggling and trying to find a bottom there in Tesla. Microsoft, also the latest worry in the NASDAQ. Everything is just kind of getting chopped down in big cap, mega cap tech. And we have precious metals with a fantastic turnaround story really adding on to those gains. So lots to digest here. Let's jump into some of these numbers. On the right-hand column, this was the short week here of returns. S&P 1.5%, NASDAQ up 0.92%. Russell 2000 was the leader this week, up almost 2%. But the real leader, which is not a new trend, this is something we have been talking about for the past couple of months, is this relative strength play that is going on outside of the United States. This continues this week, up 4% was the ACWX index. And of course, if you go country-specific or... Uh, you know, switch over to different ETFs. You can certainly get a little more specific on your X US exposure if that is your cup of tea. Now, in terms of market trends here, we've got some bullish uh, developments going on here. This is the most green that we've seen on this chart for uh, quite a long time. In fact, the short term trends are starting to turn up now in the majority of the indices and the 50 SMA is still rising here in the S&P 500, albeit slightly, but it is rising. Same thing with world stocks minus the United States also rising here. So we're starting to get a little bit more of a bullish wave going on here across time frames. Now, Volatility environment also positive this week across the board. Basically, that means that all of the volatility levels we're tracking here in the S&P, the NASDAQ and the Russell, they were lower this week than uh, last Friday. So we saw that, um, you know, you usually tend to expect that when um, you have up weeks in markets, you tend to see volatility go the other direction. But there's been a lot of fear out there, NASDAQ specifically, you know, you look through some of those components and, um, you know, everybody seems to be bracing for the hills. But, uh, you know, we, we did see a little bit of uh, a, a lower move here in VXN. Now, breath under the hood is marginally improving. And I think this is notable. Uh, it is marginal, but it is improving. And so we haven't looked at this in a couple of weeks, I don't think, but you know, the number of NYSE highs starting to get a little bit stronger, man, it is taking a long time here, but that's still probably surprising because the market has been kind of down and choppy. Meanwhile, we're starting to get a little bit of drift higher here in the number of stocks making 52 week highs. That to me is some subtle bullish divergence. I'm not going to go on this big rant call saying, hey, this is it, you know, buy signals in, let's just rip it now. But 
it's notable, okay? And, and everything here, I think, is at least building blocks. This is why we track the numbers every single week is to pick up some of the subtle nuanced movements. And, and I think this is uh, subtle, but um, is still important. So we made more highs this week than we did lows. We're starting to see the lows in, in you know, go the other direction and start to drift lower here. So you've got good, subtle trends happening underneath the hood while mega cap text takes all of the pain and carnage out there. The good news is, is there's only five or six stocks. And if you're playing in the market cap weighted indices, it gets a little tough because if those five stocks are heading south, then obviously, you know, the, the big mega cap weighted indices are going to feel some pain. But if you're in the smaller companies or if you're picking your spots as a stock picker, as a trader, then you're, you know, you're finding maybe a little more luck uh, to the upside in this type of environment. Now, if we take a look at sector performance here, basically everything in the green healthcare had to spoil it, just barely closing negative, but communication services, financials, materials were at the top of the list there. So a pretty diverse set leading out the first week of the year. And on the downside, we did see healthcare. We saw energy continues to take a little bit of a breather here. Surprisingly, not more given the fact that oil was down and natural gas down so sharply. Uh, and technology also pretty uh, stagnant here this week, only up slightly uh, to close out the week. Now, if we drill a little bit further here and we look at uh, Investors Business Daily's industry ranking, so this is uh, a snapshot of their table. They update this every uh, every day, in fact. Uh, so shout out to IBD. They're a sponsor of the show. You can support the show by supporting IBD and getting access to these lists in their digital subscription. The link is here. But one of the noticeable things in this top 10 industry rankings list is that Oil and gas is, is really been drifting out of this list. So for most of 2022, this list looked the same. It was just all different flavors of energy. And now you can see that uh, there's only two energy remaining here. It's, it's oil and gas field services and then oil and gas drilling. But everything else now is starting to creep up into industrials and retail and medical. So there's kind of a diverse mix of industries uh, that are ranking the strongest now. So I do think that is notable and interesting. Now, if we take a look at correlations here, um, you know, we've got kind of a big standout. We've got the green wave in the top left here, which is basically showing you all of the different equity indices. And they're pretty pretty correlated right now, except for the NASDAQ. So you can see there's definitely kind of a lone duck standing alone right now, and it is the NASDAQ 100. It is certainly not in the uh, bright green correlation to the Dow, the SPY, and the Russell. So those three, X, the tech is basically trading uh, together. And then if you look here at the dollar, oil, and yields, all trading very uh, inversely correlated to equity markets. So basically you're seeing essentially equity markets heading up dollar oil yields going down okay and dollar was technically up a little bit this week but uh, this is the way uh, the 10 day correlations kind of shuffle out right now so a little bit of an uh, a different mix there but still kind of much of the same uh, from 2022 now treasury yields as we talked about they were lower this week that's good markets like that 10 year yield back down to almost that three and a half percent level not quite there but getting pretty close yields going down I'd say is a good thing broadly speaking for stock specifically technology now finally here if we look at some commodities you got copper at the top of the list this week gold followed by gold and bitcoin uh, the dollar like i say dollar index was positive this week it was up 40 bips but i mean this thing was up two percent i believe midweek and and it kind of gave it all back mostly on friday uh, silver Agriculture, so the ag ETF here, DBA, uh, really hasn't been happy recently. That continues to see some unwind here in some of the commodities outside of the, well, certainly, I guess, oil and gas, clearly unwinding this week as well, sharply. But uh, this goes for some of the, you know, corn and wheat and um, some of the other soft plays that are also, you know, kind of uh, still pulling back. Um, oil, natural gas, uh, big unwind this week. Oil still positive on the month, 
natural gas just continues to see some fierce volatility to the downside. Um, so that uh, is notable here as we go into uh, the second week of the year. Now we're going to wrap up here before we look at some charts. We've got uh, our two trading systems here and they're both moderately long. Uh, Merlin certainly a little more defensive in its underlying position here of holding some dollars. But uh, Lamarack here has been on the long side of the market. No shorts as of yet, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, locking in a little bit of gains here, but nothing aggressive, nothing too, too uh, outspoken here. And the market's been very choppy. So it's it's been a good spot to be is a little more cash heavy. And uh, we'll see if they start to buy into some of this recent market strength into the rest of the week. So if you want to kick off the new year with some new trading systems, uh, we just published our uh, full year performance report for these trading systems. Every single month we post the net uh, realized returns from an IBKR account. So everything is is true numbers posted uh, with commentary. So check it out on our website and we've got that $1 trial still available uh, if you're interested. So we'll be back here in just a second with part two. All right, we are back. We've got TC2000 open and we are looking at the S&P 500 cash settled market weekly time frame. Each bar here represents one week worth of trading and you can see that the S&P 500 did finish up about a percent and a half, 55 handles in the S&P 500 and closed towards the highs. Now, a couple of things to note. First off, notice the last two weeks of some really tight indecision here. And in fact, uh, we really came into the year off of a inside week for the S&P 500. So we've basically seen ranges, you know, compress here into the end of the year and the volume has sort of trailed off a bit. And so we were waiting for some directional type of move to occur here in the S&P 500. And it's looking like that directional move wants to come to the upside. Now, if we go down to the daily chart, you can see how uh, picture perfect this looks. Again, you've got this great kind of consolidation that has taken place here for really, you know, the, the majority of December. And we really have been trading in this very tight but volatile 2%, 2.5% two range here in the S&P 500 from about, you know, 3780 or so all the way up to about 3880. And we've got this, you know, increase in volume and a new high, multi-week high close here for the S&P going into week end. Now, if we switch over to our trusty roadmap here that we navigated the markets with for 2022, you can see that uh, the S&P is back to this very important level that uh, I certainly talk about pretty much every single recording, it feels like, but it's this 3900 zone and it's a zone. It's not precise, but of course, you know, if we just zoom out even to this extent, you can see how often the market has pivoted off of this level and has really trended away from it as it starts to get through one end of it. And so here we find ourselves back to this 3900 zone. And if you recall from the last few videos, I mean, this has basically been the uh, line in the sand I've been drawing for uh, myself here looking at these markets is basically saying, look, if we can get back over 3900 on a closing basis and start accepting back over that level, then I think bulls have a shot at putting together some type of swing leg up uh, to the upside. And I feel that way just the same this week, basically. And, and, you know, clearly now we see the markets closing right into this zone here. So um, it's certainly an encouraging single bar event, but we want to see how we can get some, you know, follow up action here into next week. Can we get some follow through? Do we get some price acceptance over 3,900? That's what I'd be looking for uh, to get back over and back into this old range, this much wider range that we were in for, you know, November into the first week of December, basically. Um, so that is, to me, some pretty good, encouraging, bullish 
action here for uh, buyers heading into the second week, full, first full week of the trading year. Now, of course, we're still in the midst of some chop here. This could be another false signal. It could be another fake breakout or some type of uh, whipsaw action that we get. We'll need to see if we can get that follow through, like I say, on Monday back over 3,900. I know for me, uh, was good enough to essentially put on some S&P long exposure. So picked up some calls on Friday, like the action that I saw, like the close that I saw, and the thrust through the top end of this range. We'll see if it sticks. I will quickly ditch that, you know, uh, those calls if uh, we can't get follow through, if we don't get price acceptance over 3,900. But uh, I'm looking for this breakout to see if it can make some runs to the upside here. Now, if we take a look at the NASDAQ, this has certainly been really the market that has, has just kind of been standing on its own in, in terms of its weakness. Now, the NASDAQ has just much different structure here. So the NASDAQ was 280. This was the big zone that we were watching, and that was the last relevant level that the bulls needed to hold. We broke below it. We're still a few percent from that zone. And in fact, we were just a stone's throws away from making new cycles drawdown lows here in the NASDAQ 100. We basically have seen the generals, the market leaders getting picked off one by one. We talked about that in the last couple of weeks. First, it was, well, I guess, I don't know. It depends how far you want to go back and go all the way back to meta and then so on and so forth. We won't rehash the history. You can rewatch some of the old videos that we did, but basically, you know, the market generals were getting kind of, um, you know, taken off and sold off. And, um, Magically here, though, this week on Friday, once again, as we were so close to these recent lows, a bid has appeared and uh, we are getting a push back up into, uh, you know, in, into this old range. Now, I like the S&P more. I like the Dow more. I like a lot of areas of the market a lot more. I think the NASDAQ, you know, if it gets a bid, it, it probably has more juice to the upside because it is more beaten up and oversold and hated. But I like some of the structure in some of these other markets just a bit better than the NASDAQ 100. So, um, you know, for those reasons, I think we could experience a nice, you know, kind of squeeze here, but um, it wouldn't be my personal choice. I don't have any exposure outright to the NASDAQ uh, at this time. Now, if we look at the Russell 2000, again, you can kind of see a similar situation here. We were sideways, we were compressing, we were, you know, in a range, and now we are starting to break to the upside here. Again, this one has some more work to do over 190 or so, or I guess, you know, you could put a micro level here down around 180 that it needs to reclaim. But for me, I think the cleaner plays right now are the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones, which continues to lead here as well. Uh, much, much different view than the NASDAQ 100, for instance. It's closer to the top end of its even 2022 range, let's call it. So the Dow, the SPY, I think those are the more interesting plays right here or at least from a price volume and trend perspective, market structure perspective, uh, they tend to be the stronger of the plays. So, um, yeah, I think that is everything. I'm looking at my notes here. Bear with me for one second. Um, yeah, so let's follow up on this NASDAQ. One comment I wanted to make here is, you know, this has clearly been the weak, weakest link in the market, uh, which just shouldn't be anything new or a surprise. But I think, you know, again, thinking about the sentiment, we talked about Tesla last week. We talked about Apple last week as well. And, you know, a lot of eyes are on these two charts. So, you know, everybody's bracing for impact here in Apple, thinking that it could be the next, you know, kind of Tesla unwind. We did see Microsoft get hit hard this week, so down 6% to start the week. Um, so this clearly is one that uh, maybe some folks weren't looking at as closely as maybe Apple. Um, but, you know, Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, the thing that, you know, kind of concerns me or always gets me aware of sentiment is when just lots of folks are pointing to the potential breakdown or the leg starting here in these stocks, in the queues. And when you get many people bracing for impact all at once, you tend not to get that breakdown. And of course, this is, you know, um, it's not a science and it's tough to get a good sample size and it's 
you know, tough to be exact with those types of things. But uh, when everyone is looking at that breakdown, it is just harder for that breakdown to occur when everyone's just, you know, fully prepared for it or positioned for it. So the NASDAQ 100, one comment I wanted to make this week is, you know, I am very likely in the camp. And again, I'm not trying to make big predictions here. That's not that's just not how I approach markets, but I would not be surprised to see another leg down here in the queues before everything is is over. But it just might not happen from this consolidation. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see the NASDAQ get all the way back up to, you know, into the 290s, maybe even 300 base around, do some dancing, and then, you know, cascade lower in February or March or, you know, after a little bit of a unwind here or squeeze, let's call it. So something like that, when everyone's looking at that exit door, it's just, it, you know, you get moves like this that can happen. And so I'd say beware of the squeeze now, if more than anything, uh, over the breakdown. But that's a little bit of a rant there, but I, ha I wanted to at least, um, you know, uh, uh, pay, some, pay some mention to that. Let's look at some other markets because we got a lot to go through today. Let's look at oil. Um, oil, first off, um, continues to be in this range. So it got hammered here in the first trading week of the year, seven and a half percent lower, but you know, structurally it's, it's kind of just still doing the same thing. It's just consolidating. It's, it's grinding sideways to slightly down and it's in this just overall channel here. So we haven't had a whole lot to, to really consider here from new movement. Uh, I'd still be paying attention to the lows from December around 62, the highs recently around 70 and waiting for more directional kind of clarity there in oil. Now, gold has been really, you know, the turnaround story here, metal, silver. Um, look at these weekly charts here. It's just dancing to the upside, consolidating, breaking out higher. I think if we throw Bollinger Bands on here again, you can see it, it's getting pretty extended. It's above its weekly 2 and 20 Bollinger Band right now. So it is a bit of a tough chase, but uh, it's absolutely working. Congrats to all the gold bulls in here uh, that have just been steady marching higher. Uh, the trend is certainly at the back and there's been a nice you know bid that has appeared here for gold uh, ever since you know really turkey time or november in gold um, and silver just alike uh, really coming back from the dead here and uh, certainly working higher about 30 percent off of the lows here in silver so a little bit of a tougher chase right now but um, certainly working here over the short term now Treasuries, IEF, huge day, 10-year uh, treasury bonds on Friday, big bid moving back up towards uh, the recent December highs. Same thing for TLT, uh, not quite close to the highs from December, but certainly getting a nice bid here. So uh, rates coming down like we talked about in part one, certainly a, a, a generally good thing for uh, stocks. Now, a couple of other uh, markets, like I said, is Tesla. Uh, it is clearly putting in some heavy volume here. So volume Volume tends to peak at turning points. Maybe we're getting some type of short-term bottom here. It gapped down pretty uh, large on Friday and uh, made new cycle drawdown lows, but uh, did manage to put a bullish engulfing day in, close towards the highs, heavy volume. So it does seem like uh, a, a short-term, I'll just call it a short-term bottoms, trying to get carved out here. Um, again, longer trend is still very much down. So this is a good traders sort of paradigm here for Tesla. If we look at Microsoft, like we briefly mentioned just a minute ago, let's take off these Bollinger Bands, uh, started the week down 6%, um, getting close towards those November lows, but it's it's not quite at them yet. Uh, no, Microsoft was trying to hold up a little bit better in, in terms of FANG stocks, but uh, clearly not immune to some selling here and uh, got, um, you know, really in the past three weeks is down 16%. And for something this big, a you know, 2 trillion market cap company, uh, that is a lot of selling in, in just a couple of weeks. And if we look at Apple here again, you can see that uh, it started the the, the year off uh, with this big, this big bearish engulfing sort of bar. But you can see the way it finished off the week here with a nice tail kind of at the a very important spot here. So, you know, as we look at these June lows, you can see Apple is trying to get back above them. If you're using the lows of the of the wick here from June, uh, it did close above it. So again, I would say with Apple, we get about six, seven weeks in a row of, of selling. If this hammer can get some follow through here, I'd be more scared of the squeeze that could come out of Apple and subsequently essentially the NASDAQ in general. So um, 
you know, with some of the things that we talked about here with um, breath improving, with that sentiment being a bit off sides here, and with some of these ranges uh, like we see in the S&P that have been going sideways for a few weeks, and, and you look at this week as a potential day one move, um, you know, we could really see a, a pretty good uh, push up here in major markets and, and even still not disrupt the overall structure of a bear market. So just keep that in mind. Just be aware that risk obviously cuts both ways. Uh, and right now I'm seeing kind of more things suggesting that uh, we could push up rather than down. Last big thing that is supporting that case is the dollar, which is it's just it's very key here in terms of uh, market movement and flows. The dollar is really kind of a wrecking ball for stocks, but it's been in the steady downtrend now and it started the year strong and it looked like the dollar was going to break out and stocks were really going to get you know, uh, kind of sold off aggressively, but here's Friday's action just totally negating uh, the, the, the gains that we saw in the first half of the week. And it looks like uh, this trend that has been down for the dollar wants to continue. And again, with the heaviness here in the dollar, with some of the breath improvement with, that I see and some of that sentiment, it supports a potentially, uh, you know, kind of a squeeze here in markets. So, um, that's kind of the read right now, and that's the market relationships I'm seeing. I'd be quick to change my mind and, and turn. Uh, like I say, from the, st from the start there, S&P's knocking on a pretty important level here. So plan accordingly, but uh, those are kind of the, the, the adjustments and, and moves I've been seeing to kick off the new year. Hopefully you had a good first week of trading. Let me know your thoughts. Do you believe in this market rally, or do you think this is just another kind of fake push up here that's going to get sold off aggressively next week. Leave a comment. Let me know what you're looking at. Let me know what I'm missing or what you would disagree with. I love to see uh, what everybody has got their pulse on. So that is it for me. Thanks as always for tuning in to our Friday edition. Don't forget to subscribe, share the video if you like it. Thanks so much and have a great weekend. We'll see you back here next week.